Think about the voltages that are going to be on there. Think about the amount of current that it has to take. If you got a little TV radio, you're not terribly concerned about, uh, you know, and it, if, it, if it runs not too long, you don't have to have a great big piece of coax. If you're going to run 1,500, 2,000 watts in it, you better start thinking about it. Really get to talking about voltages in now. I mean, what if what if we think? Well, shucks, I'm gonna build a big old amplifier there with three or four tubes in it, run six thousand volts on them. That's when you have to start really worrying about transmission lines. What happens if you exceed your rating? Does the line melt? Oh, I don't know. What do you think, Bob? I bet it uh, shows as a short on the meter. What kind of a meter do you have, Bob? Your RF output meter. I bet if you exceed your rating, it shows as a short on the RF output meter. Oh, only, only you would know, Bob. That's just a stupid guess. Well, okay. If you say it's stupid, I'm going to believe you. But what I was asking is, could you melt the line? Could you conceivably melt your line? It's conceivable to the, to the point where you were exceeding the, the specifications of a piece of transmission line that, that it would explode. M0 VDJ. Now, if you don't believe this, you talk to some of the people that work down to television stations. Yeah, I'll tell you one little quick story, guys. Uh, had a piece of line. This was taking 20 kilowatts from a transmitter, okay? So this big line, big stuff. Had a mismatch at the antenna. The line uh, started getting hot. Uh, just when it went out of the building, it's where it picked to get hot. And uh, it melted the outer vinyl jacket on the thing. It came flaming down and almost burned down the building. Uh, did it burn out the transmitter? It did pretty, pretty substantial damage, but it didn't burn it. Didn't burn it out. It uh, it did some damage to the tube and a couple other things. Oh, Roger. WA zero TV Friday. N zero RJ Friday. Who's the other station in there? Uh, NW zero F for one. Oh, hello. I think you had a question, didn't you, or a comment or something? <laughs> a little while ago, but it got so interesting there, I just decided to leave it alone. You got a book here with all kinds of cable numbers in. Uh, I got some stuff I picked up, and I'm just kind of wondering. I think I know what it is, but uh, how familiar are you? The oddball numbers on uh, Ethernet, for instance. Uh, the Ethernet cables, I'd have to go grab the the, uh, the, B, the B word company book. Okay, well, no big deal. I just picked up a couple hundred feet of it for next to nothing, and... Uh, I got some numbers. I think it's it's Mark 50 ohm. It's uh, oh stranded center, double shielded, all that. Uh, I think I'll run 10 kilowatt in it. And see what I can prove for Bob there. Yeah, do it on the Fourth of July. It'd be great. Ah, uh, yeah, and I could even put an antenna on it, maybe. Yeah, I love it. I love that. <laughs> let Bob let Bob get over there and see what happens. Oh, 10 kW. The FCC will love that. Oh, I said I wasn't going to. I didn't think about putting an antenna on it. Sound like a great area. Hey, maybe I get Bob to hang on to it. No, thanks. It can be the dummy load, Bob. No, I'm no dummy. But what a load. <laughs> that is a load. You can see him hanging on the end of that transmission line with <laughs> Put a light bulb on the end of their antenna. What's that all about? Is that the current or what is that? That's a light bulb, just like you said. It lights up the light. Ford's better idea. Well, don't you keep your neighbors awake with that light bulb going on and off all night? I don't know, do you? Ask a CB. -er. Wasn't that the big thing with CBs a few years ago? Was put a little light on there so when you talk, it blinked? 
You know, it's kind of strange that all these that guys that work on HF, like Bob, he worked every country in the world, now all of a sudden he doesn't know the answer to any questions. That's because I forgot all that junk that they teach you the minute I walked out of the test room. Uh, do you have a favor? Oh, wait a minute. They teach you. You taught yourself, my my good man. Don't don't tell me they taught you. W zero eight. Somebody out there's got a question. Kansas City, Missouri. Now I wish they'd put the CWID back on you. Yeah. Uh, oh shoot. Uh, did I... No, I can't come up with a call. What do you say, Bob? ID it with a call, too, please. Oh, my call is WA0TV. That's a real government-issued call. Oh, I know, but he kept saying Bob this and Bob that. Well, I'm Bob, too, but if he's going to pick on you, I'd just soon he, he said uh, uh, whatever, whatever, Bob, instead of just plain old Bob like an NW0F. Oh, you mean you resent us both having the same name? Well, uh, I don't know. You could change yours if you want. Oh, I don't have a problem with that. I just don't know who he's talking to. Wait a minute. Let me get this straight now. The guy out there in Raytown, we, we'll call him Dirty Bob. Oh, that'll work. Every dirty job in the book. You got it. Oh, we all get carried away. Thanks for the information, Lloyd, NW0F. Yeah, no problem. Uh, that uh, cable you got, I'm sure if you grab one of the wire catalogs, it'll be in there. Most of that stuff is like RG58, that Ethernet stuff. It's just a little bit thinner. You know, those nicknames tend to stick, John. Uh, Bob, you, you, hey, Dirty Bob, you just keep your damn mouth shut for a bit. No, transformation lines are... Really very simple things. And quality means something to do you. Just remember that. Don't buy any off the wall stuff, you know, down at uh, Gomer's or something like that. Or some truck stop. And a lot of this radio shack stuff is nothing but trash, man. I'm not kidding you. No damn crimp on things. I mean, we're talking about practical applications now. Stay away from that sort of thing. If you if you if you can't solder them together and make a halfway decent jumper or something like that, there there are a few play few people. And in fact, uh, I might, might recommend uh, some of them, but uh, I mean. Don't go to Radio Shack and buy that crap. Honest to God. John, you're cussing. Did you say I'm cussing? What did I say, Bob? Uh, I think you're cussing, John. Gotta watch your language. No offense. Oh, my goodness. Here's another one of those killer cycle cops working on me again. I missed what he said. Now, can you spell it, Bob? Uh, C-U-S-S-I-N-G, or C-U-S-S-I-N, as they spell it in Texas. Well, where do you, where do you live, Bob? I live in a tree. Yeah, and you hang by your tail, right? I got you. WB0 Mobile checking in. Oh, there, Mr. Ferguson. And how you doing, Dr. C? I hope I'm not breaking up a big group here. I just heard activity and wanted to be a part of it. Well, get in there and get after you. Yeah, right. Okay. Good to hear you this evening. The net went pretty good. In fact, Lloyd did an excellent job. And Jimmy did, too. Really good. He tolerated the thing up to the point where it's just about to drive him crazy. Hmm. Well, I kind of lost track of everything. What, uh, what was the net topic about? Well, you may not believe this. It had to do with transmission lines. Transmission lines. And, of course... One of the things that really kind of bugged me about this is that here's an amateur radio operator, a past test, 
and they have to be told what transmission lines are. This is what gets me. They should have known that. I mean, for crying out loud, two parallel wires make a transmission line. Do you have any other description for it? I'll tell you one thing. Uh, for those of us that uh, were not able to capture during the testing process, we're very fortunate to have knowledgeable, kind individuals such as yourself to help walk us through it. John, and thank you. You're a nice man. Thank you. 